Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to Miami Minutes. This is the podcast where we are once again your friends for eternity. <laughs> Loyalty, <laughs> honesty, will stick together thick or thin. Uh, I am one of the hosts, Niall McGowan. And here to invite you to make it with a podcast star, it is your other host, John Parker. I really feel like we would just get arrested if we were just <laughs> driving around going, hey, make it with a, a podcaster, baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, podcasters deserve more respect in this society, God damn it! like rock stars. We're rock stars. I feel like it would, it would be the biggest blow to my ego if <laughs> we did this to actually say to someone, well, I'm a podcaster, and then been like... Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. That's because people always, everyone's like, oh, all, all men over 30, all white men over 30 have a podcast. And you're just like, well, I don't want to be the stereotype, but here we are. <laughs> so, but mine's good. <laughs> oh, is it, is, are they talking about my heavy connection minute by minute? I don't think so. No. You know what they're doing? They're doing what every white guy over 30 does with their podcast. And it's just three guys chatting shit. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no, there's no point to it. Yeah. See, you need a hook. And the hook of this, of course, is Miami Connection. A hook creates your show. Yeah. Even yeah. if you go off topic, you need that to anchor you and bring you back in. Mm, mm. Clever. To bring us back into this particular minute, which is minute 33, uh, it opens with five uh, toms a-peeping. <laughs> uh, and it ends a minute later with one repenting raw dog a preaching. Uh, oh, so oh, okay, raw dog in there. I have to, I have to say, th- we're talking about the whole concept of doing a film minute by minute, this minute is one of the minutes you get into this kind of analysis for. There is so much happening in this minute. <laughs> like every shot gave me joy because you forget that like it's got. Every, there's things you didn't reckon, you didn't know were in there in the first place, and then it's got like classic moments in there where you're like, "Of course, I remember that." It's like one yeah. of the finding images of Miami Connection. No, that's true. Like this is one of the things when you first set out on a project like this, you assume, "Oh, we're going to talk so much about the fights." And they, no, you don't. It's it's minutes like this. I've got like twice the notes here than I did of last minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so we kind of did talk about like the opening shot is of course that uh, that kind of dune buggy thing with the little yeah with the boys back in town baby yeah. it was a bit similar like they don't mess around in this beach like that that cop has got a freaking gun on him like <laughs> it's but, America I assume everyone has a gun on them well that's true but you're just like you actually <laughs> see it it's like a guy a cop is out on the beach with a loaded weapon just cause <laughs> like just yeah. like, like over like, I grew up in Ireland like where like during the troubles. And you'd have, like, freaking, you know, like, policemen out on the street with machine guns just walking around your neighborhood and stuff. Oof. But then that stopped after, like, 1997. <laughs> so, like, yeah. even to me now, it's like, well, this is still happening in America? You just have guys just walking around with, yeah, cash, you got my gun, just hanging, hanging off yeah. my belt here. But... I suppose we have to say that for the listeners. It's, it's, not, it's not normal here. Like, if I hadn't have lived in Pakistan, I would never have seen in person a gun. No, no, I've never seen one in England. No, I think it's the police. Police would only c- carry like what a taser, and, and that's maybe, only in certain circumstances. Yeah, most of the time it's like it used to be the old cliche of like the constable with a truncheon. Oh, they still have that. They still beat you with that. <laughs> no, but I think you never see you don't see them wandering around like twirling it or anything like that. No. It's very, it's, you see the police walking around; they're just walking around basically with their hands in their pockets because they ain't oh, got anything. I think, I think they're told try to be less intimidating because. Mm. They don't want people to be scared of them. Mm. Uh, of course, people still are, because, you know, our police aren't great by any means. Don't no, get me wrong. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, although I guess they, some people who aren't afraid of the police, of course, are a dragon sound, because yeah. they are scofflawing. There's a bunch of scofflaws in what they're doing. They're just out <laughs> actively harassing the public. Uh, through ADR, no less. <laughs> as well. Oh yeah, and and when you say harassing, you mean harassing. Oh, it, the, no, their behaviour is quite contemptible, to be honest. No, it's like it gets worse next minute. But yeah. like this, this is actually, quite frankly, I expected better of Jim. Like I really like the way him up there going like ooh wee girl. <laughs> like and the fact too, it's like blatantly. Oh, it's all the dialogue is blatantly just like. It was all done in a booth like two weeks later. <laughs> oh, yeah, stuff. because they didn't want to actually be shouting at people on the beach. Oh, I, I think they were shouting. I think it was just... No, was, but they weren't being crude, were they? I, I, I would believe they probably were as well. I, I think what the oh. problem was is that when they got back, they listened back to the audio and it just sounded like... 
Uh, that's true as well. They clearly haven't got this set up properly. No, no. Well, actually, here I'll reveal this now. I normally save the commentary track for the end, but I know last minute you really wanted to know about this, and it ties in. On the commentary track, they reveal that they didn't hire any of these people as actors. None of them. None of them. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> but, but they also didn't just shoot it guerrilla style, mm. right? It's like a weird middle ground. They got the cooperation of the beachgoers who were there, mm. you know, just like, is it okay if we do this? You know, asking people. Largely because of the fact that, you guessed it, Kim was so well-liked in the area and everybody knew him. Ah. Yet again, he just went around going, can can we shoot our movie? And they were just like, oh, uh, yeah, you're Grandmaster Kim, sure. <laughs> Imagine that was probably like Angelo came over and was like, do you mind if we shoot this movie? And they're like, get the fuck out of here, jerk. <laughs> and then they're like, but it's for YK Kim. Oh, it's YK Kim. Oh, cool. oh of course, of course. Of course. <laughs> oh, I'll be my guest, yes, yeah, of yeah. course. Uh, you can shout any profanities and slurs and uh, you can be as crude as you want with me. <laughs> Although I have to say, I do, I have a, I'm a little forgiving of, uh, of Jim up there because it's like, just like it's so like it's like from like a 1960s beach movie or something it's like, <laughs> like ooh wee girl <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah it's not too bad at the minute is it? Mm. woo wee who says woo wee <laughs> I also love the way it's clear it doesn't sound like Jim saying it I no. don't know it, it's weird it sounded like again it's probably was, it was recorded like after they stopped shooting <laughs> like it was, <laughs> it was in several weeks you know after several months after they were done but and this yeah. too, because not only does like obviously the audio was messed up, so they had to re-record it. Is wink in right either? <laughs> oh, the wink is weird. Yeah, as soon as you see him, you know he's hanging out the passenger side of his best friend's ride, and uh, he's <laughs> checking out the babes. He gives them that little wink, and it's like, no, man, don't do that. That's, that's a, you've you've hit the nail on the head there, John. That's what these guys. They're scrubs. Scrubs. They're, no doubt. That's that's what TLC were writing about. They saw <laughs> Miami Connection, and you're like. I know when that movie bombed. <laughs> it was because of those goddamn scrubs. <laughs> I know, we, we, we've uncovered what that song was really about. It's these specific guys. Like, yeah, we were down the beach one day and these scrubs were shouting at us. Yeah, there you go. You find out the, the, the girls the next minute. That was that was TLC back, back oh in the day. Oh, my God. I'll tell you what, though. The cameraman isn't doing any favours either because this... Oh, good Lord. This is another unbelievably terrible tiny bikini. Oh, yeah. At the beginning of this minute, it's like, ooh, oh, okay. That's, uh, <laughs> you were literally going, ooh, wee. Ooh, wee. No, yeah. As I said already, I don't really like bikinis, and I especially don't like ones that are barely there. Mm, mm. Uh, that one, yeah, yeah. It's very much like, you. Maybe they're saying in retrospect we got the permission of people, because it's very like, <laughs> hey, you know, you okay with us? Just like li- this lingering shot of your chest as we go past. <laughs> like, it's very like, I don't know. That's what made me look it up, actually, because it's very specifically not showing the face as well, which made me think, like, are you sure you asked this one? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. If she was okay being in it, wouldn't she want her face in it? Hmm. Oh, maybe. Though. Yeah, it could be that she was just like, all right, I, I can. Like, um, maybe she was like skipping out in a class or something. It's like, don't let anyone know I was here. By all means, film, but don't. You know, it's going around like a bag on her head or something. <laughs> <That> was... <laughs> oh, it really makes me like Jim less, though. After we were on his side in the last few minutes, now I'm like, oh, man, no, no, mm. don't do that. A little bit of uh, cheeky tomfoolery is okay, but it it carries on. Yeah. yeah. Well, because the, the, Jim is, though, not to not to get into any stereotypes, though, but Jim is very, he's very camp. And so oh, I, yeah. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's putting on a front here. Like, he's, <laughs> he's not really interested in the ladies. He's more kind of like, well, i got to go around these guys. The, the ultra masculine dragon sound. Yeah. I have to be, pretend to be all into all this stuff. But like, no, you know. I agree. He's very camp. Mm. Maybe it's uh, yeah. Maybe it's like when uh, Sideshow Bob is trying to be all. Is it Bob or is it uh, his brother when they're trying to be all masculine? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yes, shake it, madam. <laughs> like, oh. Capital knockers. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, oh, I'd love to get Kelsey Grammer going, ooh, wee, girl. <laughs> he would do that line, I think. Yeah. Oh, it, it also, it's it's very, um, I always thought that Simpsons bit was a bit like uh, Alan Partridge when he's trying to be super mask as well. And if American listeners don't know, he's a, a wonderful comic uh, character over here. And uh, yeah, he's, he's with these lads and they're having a pint of beer, you know, and these women walk past and he's trying to get in with them and be cool. So he's like... Ooh, I'd like to have it off with her. <laughs> and he's like, tits. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's, 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 
Yeah, we have, you know, several shots of very skimpy, you know, girls in bikinis, boys doing the twist, you know. Right? <laughs> um, and You're little, right, though. It's very 60s. Yeah, well, that could be YK Kim, but then he, I wouldn't be surprised if he's like, I learned English through watching, like, Gidget and <laughs> all the kind of, like, beach party movies of, you know, starring Jan and Dean and all these yeah. kind of things. Even though I don't like bikinis and I'm not that into the beach, I don't know, maybe the time's right to bring the beach movie back. Well, the, the, the world is yearning desperately for the return of sex in films because it's, mm. it's been a thing. No, many, many articles have been written recently because there was that movie last year with uh, Ben Affleck and Anna de Armas. And everyone was like, it's the return of the erotic thriller. And then all the reviews was like, it's not erotic at all. It's so, oh. s- s- you know, and I think the problem is now people are kind of scared to put in sex scenes because of all the history of harassment in Hollywood. And so now that the, it's been noted that there's, yeah, there's a real um, tepidness to on-screen chemistry and to any erotic scene. Like, there was a, a rom-com with um, Jonah Hill. And oh, it was, yeah. came out afterwards. Like, the big kiss at the end was done by CGI. What? Because, again, because oh. now that's all, like, oh, you have to have intimacy coordinators on there. It's all very, it's very, like, they're over, they're over-correcting. Uh, no, you're so, probably right. I mean, we live in a world where we just had a Hellraiser movie that was quite sexless. Yeah, the, yeah, the big problem is, like, where's, where's the kink? It seems to be all, it's a, it's a metaphor for addiction this time, but where's the kink? Hellraiser's supposed to be sweaty and disgusting and sexy. So Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, And you can still have it be about addiction. Like yeah, You can have yeah. both of those things side by side. That's fine. But that was my, my problem, and I think that was yours, wasn't it? It was like, yeah, this, this isn't like a sexy movie. This is, yeah, it's just very, it felt like, I think I said at the time, you know, Hellraiser always feels like you're in like a really dingy S and M club, but this felt <laughs> in, like you're in Berlin. At, yeah, but the new one feels like you're in like a gynecologist's office. It's so yeah, s- which is shocking yeah. considering like I love Jamie Clayton, like she's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. It's just like uh, okay. no, no, don't, I don't blame Jamie. <laughs> I think I think they they, yeah. they give them better material for for being pinhead. Everything she was doing was great, but it was just like, well, you're just not getting really to be pinhead, though, are you? Yeah, but well, that says it all, though. Like a, a rom com, you can be like, oh, okay, maybe they're trying to appeal to a wider audience. But when Hellraiser's not that sexy, something's going on. Yeah, but I think now it is kind of like people might have to come to the terms with like, well, everyone just needs to calm down, and maybe you can start allowing back in like just rampant. Like have have erotic thrillers, have like proper intense sex scenes and stuff back in movies, because that's what people want. Because that's what you know, you go to the movies to see things that you can't do. So <laughs> if you want to live vicariously through Michael Douglas somehow shacking up with all these women, by all means do it. But yeah, yeah it just feels point. now is that the really there's a real tepidness in Hollywood in terms of erotic erotica. So I'm a weird one. I don't off, I don't like it in every movie. I really don't. But I, I I oddly like it when that's the point, like when it is an erotic thriller. Like we mm. covered on Batman it, Poison Ivy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and that was great uh, because it's like, okay, you know, going in, this is the point of the movie and it's going to fit into the plot. We're not just putting it in to be sexy. Yeah. Like yeah. it's all going to revolve around this. So that worked really well for me. I thought mm. that was great. But it's... um. Oh, that would be next minute. Jesus Christ, it gets like, it's like there's a kiss that goes, uh, literally most of the minute is a kiss. Like, it's a crazy. Yes. Uh, but yeah, yeah the, from that then, it's like, yeah, well, I think now they'd be like, well, if we made a beach movie, you know, people would be complaining because it would be all women in bikinis and stuff. It's like, have the guys oil up and do their stuff too. And it's like, just go crazy, go have a crazy beach movie. Get, go get and those do it. guys in Speedos and oil them. There you go. We were watching, uh, it was really refreshing actually, because um, as mentioned, obviously you were, you're ill so you couldn't go, John, but mm. around uh, our mutual friend Jimmy's last night and we watched Fatal Deviation, classic Kung Fu uh, <sighs> movie, much like Miami Connection. But before Always that, we watched watch. um, No Holds Barred. Oh, I've got that downloaded, ready to go. Yeah. Uh, and the, the, the really refreshing thing about it is that like, there's a lot of objectification going on in No Holds Barred and it's all towards Hulk Hogan. Like there's bits where like a woman comes into him and he's just got his ass up in like little tiny shorts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just like you're focusing on Hulk Hogan's ass. Like that's the whole. Bo- She's in her underwear, but it's not eroticized. He's eroticized, <laughs> which is hilarious because you know I don't want to be mean to someone, but he's not exactly the sexiest wrestler. Well, that's the thing. It's just like <laughs> Hulk's problem seems to be like classically he should be a, a very attractive man because like well look at the body and look at like he's obviously take care of him, care of himself. But then as soon as you see the face, it's just like. <laughs> No. <laughs> no, no, and the so. hair and the moustache weren't doing him favors. Like I know they're iconic, but if you're trying to be sexy, yeah, yeah, 
I don't know. Yeah, maybe, maybe if it didn't have the sash, maybe we just shaved the head. Maybe back in the day, it could have been. Like, yeah, Hulk Hogan was a real sex symbol. But I'm sure some people got off to him. I'm, oh, sure, I'm they... sure they did. But, you know, I mean, even in his heyday, you know, in the 80s, uh, mid to late 80s, I don't think people really thought he was sexy. No, no. Well, they would say it's always sunny, like the skin of a boiled hot dog or something <laughs> <Yeah>. like that. <laughs> It really, really does. And and that's the height of people finding moustaches sexy. So, you know, mm, mm, yeah. he's, he's he's failing somewhere. What are yeah. you doing, Hulkster? I think maybe that's what he's going for, no holes barred. It's like, I imagine he probably had a lot of creative clout with it. So he's like, yeah, damn right, you're going to show my ass. You're going to show how sexy I am. i got to get people to believe this. And then <laughs> it's like, we can't work miracles, Hulk. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, let me tell you, right, Hulk... <laughs> Hulk Hogan actually claims he has, as is typical with the Hulkster, he probably is exaggerating. He claims that him and Vince McMahon sat in a hotel room and rewrote the whole thing. Really? Because they weren't happy with it. And they were like, no, this is terrible. We're going to fix it. And those two alone sat and fixed it before they shot the movie. Well, fixed. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it depends on your definition of fixing it. Uh, but also, uh, Hulk Hogan is known to just say things, you know, like when he claimed that he was joining Metallica or something. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then Metallica were like, no, we were never asking him to join. <laughs> well, I do like the idea that Vince McMahon and Hulk Hogan were sitting around like, we're going to do a tribute, to, an homage to it. It happened one night in the walls of Jericho scene. But then we're going to put a shot, a close-up of my ass. And it's... <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful. And McMahon, but like, yes. Every idea Hulk Hogan pitched him, Vince McMahon was doing the meme. Of he's like, hmm? Well, there were always rumors those two had sex with each other. But, you know, that, I think that might be Hulk Hogan haters saying that. <laughs> <laughs> it might be the Iron Sheik or something. I would say that is one of my all-time favorite images in general. That Vince McMahon meme of him like, getting gradually more enthused about yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the first one. It's the, hmm? Like the kind of little, ooh. I love that expression on his face. I'm like, mm, well, it's wonderful. Sense. But speaking though of, of things that were uh, eroticized, though, because we do, we, we got a shot of um, the lifeguard tower. Oh yeah, I thought that was really like it, it was making him look very powerful, the master of the sea. It kind of sounded like the fact it says, "Warning: Swim within 100 yards of lifeguard." And for a second though, I was kind of like, should it be like you know, swim within 100 yards of yards of lifeguard and find out? Like, he's really like, don't you come near me, asshole. <laughs> I like the way we took a different approach, but both work. Because to me, I was like, it, it's almost like he's a, he's a daddy. Mm. He's saying, you know, I'll look after you. Yeah. You oh. stay near me. I'll be your daddy. <laughs> Weird is that he doesn't seem to have a chair up there. It seems like No, he's... no, because he's so powerful now. He doesn't need a chair. He's he's watching at all times. Yeah. He's ready to pounce. This isn't like friggin' Baywatch where they had their own little cabin and they were just like dithering around the whole time. It's like, oh, maybe we'll see a problem. <laughs> but <laughs> Mitch is talking about Hobie's homework or some crap. You know? <laughs> uh, this guy's like, no, I stand and I get up there at 6 a.m. And I stand until 8 p.m. every night. He's erect all day. <laughs> he's got stamina, this guy. <laughs> yeah, he does. He sure does. What he does is he swims in when the tide is in, climbs oh. on the thing, just steps onto it, and then the tide goes out, and then he waits for the tide to come back in, and that's when he's off. He just oh, jumps back in the water. Oh, that's when he switches. Yeah. Yes, swims back. <laughs> I love it. And, you know, it's the classic movie thing. I'm sure it's just because they couldn't be bothered to shoot properly and get up there and film him. But it's the classic movie thing of, you know, shooting him from a low angle. mm it's establishing his dominance, right? Yeah. That's his power. Yeah. Look at him. He's a powerful figure. You're looking up like a statue. There's a real cheekiness to the shot as well, though, where it's kind of got the vibe of, like, he's heard reports that there's these, these people out filming on the beach <laughs> who shouldn't be there. And they're, like, sneaking past. They're like, get a shot of him. Get a shot of him. Oh, shit. Run, 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 run. Yeah, yeah. If, if they had a camera, that would kind of make perfect sense. Oh, why don't they have a camera? Were they easy to obtain back then? Because uh, wouldn't that like be a... cool? They're going around the beach filming people, and, so, <laughs> and then all these shots could be from their POV. Oh, I'm talking about in real life, though. I think like this. this oh, guy... in real life, I think about the characters. That's why his uh, back's turned to them. Is like, uh, this guy's actively? That's why he's up looking around. It's like he's been told that there's a there's a YK Kim and his gang of cronies are down in the beach filming, and they're just like, oh, 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 run, 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 run. <laughs> no, I could totally buy that because of what I said. If because they haven't bothered to get up and actually film him properly, it does feel like just just get this quick as we drive past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've missed something though. We've missed something. Oh. We've got 
Jim and Co. Topless. Yes, of course. <laughs> how did we not bring this up? I don't. How many? How many drinks is this going to be? I mean, we've got Jim, so that's one, mm. and then we've got. I think everyone but Mark. I can't think. Mark was he was topless when they were running around the ocean. I'm not too sure if he's got a top on in the in this. Actually, at the minute. No, so. no, he's he's got he's got a shirt on. Mm. Um, oh, actually, it's kind of hard to tell. I assumed he did, but looking at him. I don't know. So we've got one, two, three, four, maybe five. Mm, mm. Uh, so take a gigantic drink. Drink your whole bottle of vodka. <laughs> there we go. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, so we get the just more, more active harassment now. Oh, like. Uh, Jazz Jack, Jack Diamond, anyway. Like, I can't, I can't remember what the character's called. <laughs> it's Tom or Joe or whatever, whoever he's playing, the drummer guy. No, wasn't, isn't he called Jack? Is he called Jack? I keep getting the vibe then that Jack will be another guy in the group. <laughs> and it's like, it's, it's just going to go on and on. Joseph Diamond is Jack. Oh, there we go. There we go. You think now, well, how many, we're 33 weeks in to this process. <laughs> I still been like, oh, that that, that guy, whoever he is. Don't worry, I don't think people who make it know their names half the no, time. No. But uh, yeah, him doing this really lackluster, like, hey, hey, baby, make it with a rock star. Hey, <laughs> like, this is kind of because just say, like, can I do that? Am I like, there's no proof that this man is a rock star either. He's just like, yeah, can I just? He, he looks like this little like, you know, pale, pale as the underside of a fish, you know. <laughs> This goblin man going around going, hey, make it with hey, baby. He's like, I'm going to take your word that you're like, what, a, a drummer in a band? Is it, what, what, how are you a rock star? Have I heard of you? Are they all like, Dexies is here? <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. You're in Dexies? Uh, well, actually, no. Um... <laughs> we kicked Dexies' ass, so I think you'll find. <laughs> you're those losers who beat them up. How dare you do that? We love those guys. <laughs> No, it is it is so funny that he's like trying to utilize his rock star privileges, but he's not confident in it at the same time. So he's like, "Hey, <laughs> yeah, he's testing the waters. He's not done this before." Mm, mm. And then it's really, <laughs> it just gets better as it goes. Cause <laughs> he cut that to the shot of the all of them in the car, and you see Angelo. <laughs> <laughs> trying to flex his muscles oh, in the most Lord. awkward friggin' way, but like, who is he aiming it at? What muscles are there to speak of? Like this, it looks like a, it looks yeah. like he's having a seizure or something. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, you know, he's got a good, he's got a good body, but he's not he's not buff. He no. doesn't have muscles. You know, he's like uh, he's one of, he's one who wasn't part of YK Kim's. Uh, taekwondo orphanage like wait well, he's a part of the orphanage but like uh, as an actual person in real life he was like oh I just had, his story was that like I had a friend who was doing photography for YK Kim and they recommended yeah. me and that's the only reason I'm here <laughs> like, I think did he learn it afterwards he's definitely talked about it a lot afterwards it must have probably yeah he probably got roped yeah. in to roped into the whole thing uh, you've you're... got to you have to sign your life away to Kim yeah. he owns your soul like Shang Tsung <laughs> <laughs> He's probably told, like, well, you know, there's definitely going to be a sequel. Uh, and if you learn Taekwondo, we'll make you like the main character. <laughs> yeah, baby. Make it with a movie star. <laughs> but uh, no, what a dick move to just stand up and flex. Like, oh, come on. Is that, is that really what women want? Well, like, everything about what they're doing is just like, has this worked on anyone ever <laughs> in any scenario? Like, no. I mean, this was a genuine thing. Like these women, they're gonna like as soon as they see them, they're gonna like, oh, the bikinis just come tearing off. They're they're chasing <laughs> the car down. Like, like the thing, it's hard to tell with the movie whether they are condoning or condemning the behavior, or they're just like, oh, this is just guys having fun. This is what we all do, right? So it's like, yeah, it's no. just showing you reality now. It's not it's not giving judgment either way. <laughs> Although it is great though, as he's doing it. Uh, see about second twenty one. So he's flexing in the background. Mark's kind of mind his own business driving, but uh, but John, he looks like he's actively worried. Like yeah, he has the vibe of like we shouldn't be here doing this. Like we're gonna get arrested. <laughs> like <this. laughs> I can't go back to jail. Yk, I can't do it. <laughs> They'll eat me alive. <laughs> it's like I barely made it out the last time. Like you got a pretty thing like me. <laughs> 
And meanwhile, Jim's in there. He's got the, the jeans unzipped, the shirt off, ready, yeah. the towel over his shoulder, ready to go, all right, boys, send me in. <laughs> oh, and you know what I love in this minute as well is all the stuff they're doing. Right, there's there's basically no reaction from anyone because they obviously <laughs> shot it all separately. Well, I think what, what, what probably is happening is that because um, I was listening to an interview um, with Jane, and she did a, a, a like an interview talking about Miami Connection. Mm. Uh, of course, what else was she going to be talking about? <laughs> but um, they, uh, she's saying like, she, the fair to I, she, uh, she made a joke that I laughed at, and nobody in the the podcasting studio did. <laughs> Because she's talking about like, oh yeah, this was all we were been towed around, like so they weren't driving the beach. They had the the car, which looks actually I don't think it's the same car they had previously because it looks really decrepit. That's a different car, surely, yeah. It looks like this is like an old rust bucket, and it probably didn't even drive, and that's why they're getting towed around because they're like, well, obviously the camera has to be there, the film, the front shot, but then so it probably is a reason like them shouting all this stuff is because people are probably trying to ignore them because they're getting sexually harassed by assholes who aren't even driving around in a car. They're getting towed <laughs> around by a truck. So it makes them look even worse. It's like, how are you going to show off to someone like, hey, baby, my car broke down. <laughs> Check it out. Look how cool I am. I get towed. Yeah, but she uh, and she was saying too about like how illegal it all was. And she's like, oh yeah, it was totally illegal. Uh, and I was like, ah. <laughs> and she's like, no, nobody. nobody, nobody okay. I think that's good. Yeah, yeah. Was like the host Aww. was just like, I guess we're going on to the next question. She's <laughs> like, what? Well, come on, man. She's giving you gold. you got to appreciate the crap puns. God damn it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's, as the minute progresses then, um, so many random little shots of, you know, you got Jim with his mirrored sunglasses. Oh, they're beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So it always makes me think of Cool Hand Luke, so that's my only, hey. my only hang up with it. But um, Oh, when he lifts his glasses, though, there's a shot of these two women. Actually, well, first there's asses. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's just after that. Um, there's these two women who it looks like we finally get a reaction from people. It looks like they're laughing at them. Oh, they probably are. They like, look at these are. fucking losers. Oh, definitely. 100% they are just like, what do these assholes think they're doing? Like, <laughs> it's going to do you look at a decrepit, probably the car doesn't even have wheels, probably. <laughs> it's just getting dragged around the beach. And some guy's going, hey, baby, make it with a rock star. You would be like, get the hell away from me, loser. Like, what? Idiots. Oh, but, um, Oh, so many little things. So you have a guy there uh, wearing, like, a, a moose hat for some reason. Uh, oh, yeah, that was amazing, that moose hat. He thinks he's the funniest fucker in town, doesn't he? <laughs> well, he seems like he's layering up while on the beach. It's weird. Like, it looks like that would be a warm, heat-retaining hat. And then he's it got does. his face covered in a big bushy beard. He's like, well, I might get cold out on the beach. You never know. <laughs> you never know. He, he's planning ahead. He's like, I'm going to stay even when the sun goes down, baby. <laughs> and he's like, me and that lifeguard, we're going to hang out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finally get to the bottom of uh, his, <laughs> what, what the hell is, is a sign telling me to stay away from him? Or is it saying to make sure to stay within 100 yards of him? We've got to know, damn it. <laughs> It'd be great, though, too, that the lifeguard just has such a like, razor vision. There's as soon as somebody like swims one lap out of that hundred, he's like, "Hey, hey! <laughs> get back over here!" Oh, the guy though. Come to think of it, him and his mate both shirtless. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Drink. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, and then that. Oh, that... You, you know what? Sorry, we've got another one we missed. We've got another one when those women are laughing at them as they drive by, which was well deserved laughter. Mm -hmm. There's a guy in the background with no shirt on. Have another drink. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, uh, and that's when you get the booty I mentioned. And I've got mm. to bring this up because we get one of the greatest lines in the movie. Uh, Jim's taken in the booty. <laughs> and right. uh, about that. <laughs> we, we hear a voice, probably Jack, I mm. don't know, say, they don't make buns like those down at the bakery. Uh, Good God. Again, this was probably all just like, all right, guys, come in. We have to re-record re this dialogue. And then they were probably just, just improvised stuff you would shout at the beach. So they're probably yeah. all awkwardly standing around in a freezing cold, like, studio. And just, like, standing in, like, their raincoats or whatever. <laughs> just like, uh, yeah, woo, yeah. Don't get buns like that down at the bakery. Uh, Shake it, baby. <laughs> just, well, like, come on, more, 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 more. Like, oh, yeah, get your boobs up. Uh, <laughs> Yay, I love ladies. 
Yes, women. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a terrible... Like, I think that's the worst like, slash best line. They don't make buns like those down at the bakery. Oh, mm. no, that's so cringy. Don't say that to a woman. <laughs> well, that kind of thing always makes me think of... Um... I think I remember when the episode first aired, I was like, I didn't think that, 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 that was that bad. But, like, uh, that episode of Curb, where mm. Larry's driving past Wanda, and he says, like, hey, I know that tush anywhere. And, like, drives on, he's like, thinking he's just been friendly. And then she comes over, yeah. she's like, what the hell were you shouting about my ass for? <laughs> but I also remember her going, like, what are you saying? Like, hey, assy? How about that ass? And just like, <laughs> you didn't say anything like that, but, like. The idea that she in her head is warped into Larry David shouting, "Hey, Assy!" <laughs> I love. I'm going to start saying that to you. Just, why not, Assy? Yeah. No, I, I think if it's your friend, that's a different vibe, right? If it's your friend, it's kind of you're being funny. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. These guys don't know these women. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't know. I still, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare. Like, be no. Like, but if you understood that, oh, we've got this kind of. F- playful relationship you'd be like oh, okay yeah yeah oh this though is just like well again maybe they were th- this was where they drew the line it's like we can't shot that at women but like we've got loads of shots of women's asses so <laughs> let's improvise some material around that you know oh, i hate to think of the things they cut jesus oh. christ hey baby let's fuck <laughs> <laughs> no you can't say that don't put that in the movie that was like the that was the, the cut that aired at the at Khan. Yeah, <laughs> and separate ones like it was like more erotic than uh, Lars von Trier's Nymphomaniac. <laughs> this was the original. It was the three film. the three hour cut of Miami Connection. Most of it was just this scene with <laughs> much more explicit material. <laughs> and just sex. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Loads of dirty. No, oh. but then we do get the. Just one of the most enduring images of this <gasps> film. Yes. It only lasts like literally like two, like if if a zero, like one point five seconds maybe it lasts. Yeah, I've just timed it. It's it, you're basically dead on. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, <laughs> Angelo, shirtless of course, standing up, and doing a dance. Maybe? The Angelo. That's what we're gonna call it. Do the Angelo. Do the I Angel- want listeners to send in video clips of you doing it. <laughs> Cause it's just it's like what what is there to say about it? It's just like, it's so. I think it's funnier the fact that it goes by so quickly. Yeah, because they're yeah. like of all the dancing he was doing, this is the only footage that was usable. Is this one point five seconds? <laughs> and I think that makes it cooler to latch onto because they're not trying to make it a thing. No, 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 no. no. They're not doing like the the, the Jenna Ortega Wednesday <laughs> dance, yeah. which I love. But they set out to make that a thing. Oh, they got that 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 uh, just this past week. She was on SNL. Oh yeah, I heard about this. And they had that the, the advert for it, like was her them all dressed as Wednesday, going, "Go on, do the dance with us, do the dance with." Us. And she was kind of like, oh, "Okay, I'll, I'll do it one time, guys." And then you see her, the lack of energy ha- she has as she's doing it, and you just sense it's like, "I'm sorry, Jenna, but you're gonna uh, be cursed with that dance." She's like, "I'm so fucking sick of this already." It's like you've got like happened to Ricky Gervais with The Office that dance he did, he still gets it. Like it's twenty years yeah. later, John Cleese with the silly walk. Still gets it. And when yeah. was that? Like the seventies? Yeah, yeah. He had the great time. We asked him to do it on the Late Late Show in Ireland, and he just walked off. Oh, like, <laughs> like he did the thing. He's like, "Oh, I'll do it. I'll do it." And he's like, over here, over here, and he just walked off the set. And then they're like, "Oh, I think he's gone." <laughs> like, ah. it's, which is fair play to him. He's like, "Yeah, I'm not your dancing monkey. God damn it." That's genius. I kind of love it. Yeah, but yeah, so Jenna Ortega is now going to be like the rest of her life. She's going to be, oh, do the Wednesday dance. And I've been like, I'm an actress for Christ's sake. I got more to me than that. She seems the sort who in a few years will just be like a John Cleese. She'll be like, absolutely not. Oh, yeah. I think even it's, the sense was even in that advert. She's like, this is the only time I will ever acquiesce to be performing a section of that of that dance. Uh, and after that, never again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but um, but yeah, Angelo. Like, if, the thing is, though, if you, were, if you met Angelo, would you not be very tempted to be like, do the Angelo. Do they it was like a thing you look like you're like a chicken about to get its head cut off or something. Like it was Yeah. He would love to do it. Well um, I don't know. I think a lot of that is, I, I would resent that kind of thing. Like me personally. I would if I was like a star and I was trying to you know, but the, you know, he's not like a he's not a big actor. I don't want to be mean. Mm. So, nah. like, it's a bit like the guy from Troll 2, you know, just lean into it. Everyone loved him talking about, well, you don't piss on hospitality, so that's all he fucking says. 
Uh, that guy's actively going around. He's like, oh, you, you know who I, I'll, I'll type my belt from the, the South the Hunger Pangs. And then, who are you? <laughs> I did love that in that documentary. It's a best worst movie, if you haven't seen it, listeners. Uh, he's going around assuming everyone in his town knows who he is. And clearly <laughs> they're all like, who the fuck is this guy? And then, but most of them will be like, aren't you the dentist? <laughs> 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 Like, why are you telling me about you tightening your belt? Does it make any sense? Why are you talking about pissing on hospitality? Does it make sense? I was in a movie. Don't you, didn't you see the movie? No. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody did, but John and Niall. <laughs> like, Angela's going around. like, oh, wait a minute. Now you recognize me. He just rips off his shirt and does this little motion. And I was like, oh, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> the guy from the thing. Oh, don't die it out. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, you. You get a great bit of dialogue as well. I'm not going to do it justice, but... From the car again, someone going, baby, I need you to. And then it just trails off into, ooh. <laughs> that was part of, that was also in the three hour erotic cut. <laughs> and they're just like, you can't, you can't repeat what he said. <laughs> <laughs> it was far too crass. There was a lawsuit. The lady involved was not happy. <laughs> oh. What but, the um, fuck am I, what's, what's he, is he basically saying, I, how do I make this not too crude? I know we're not a PG show, but. Is he basically saying, "Come and suck this"? Yeah, that's terrible. He's like, "I need, I need, I need you in. Like, I need to be inside you. Or it's like, it's, I need you to be inside me. I need you to take this thing and shove it up my ass." Like, like, oh my god! Yeah, that's essentially the vibe I'm getting. It's like, no, don't shout this at someone. It's one thing, like you know, g- giving people a little wink. <laughs> but um, oh, what they took? So we got, like, we have another shot of more asses. Oh, uh, a woman walking past, but there's a guy with like a little, um, also packing heat, I guess. He's got a little water <laughs> wow, pistol. Yeah. He starts spraying him. Another guy with great facial hair as well, actually. It's like, this, is, this is the glorious time of the 80s. It's all. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's rocking some good hair. And you know what? Oh, Jesus Christ. Him and his mate are topless. <laughs> <laughs> Take a drink. Uh. But um, I, I did note, though, because I was like, is this a, th- is this a thing? Like in the background, you have this obviously like a you know a, a refreshments truck, mm. and it's got you know root beer, ginger ale, boiling hot Texas style <laughs> ginger ale. It's the most American combination of things right here. Uh, but iced tea, lemonade. But then over it has the side ice cold pickles. Yeah, I was like, is that 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 I never would never ever consider like when I'm at the beach. Like, you know what I can go for right now <laughs> is an ice cold pickle. Like, yeah. it's just such a, like, it's like, but they do, because that's, oh, you want an ice cream? It's like, oh, it's a nice, sweet little treat. But then a pickle is just like, <laughs> uh, I want like a, a, like a savory, soury kind of. Vinegary. Like, yeah. I was like, but do, is this a common thing where you go on, on, the, on Daytona Beach, regular human beach? Um, <laughs> if you were done, you're like, I could have an ice cold pickle. Like, I'll just reach into a freezer and give you a frozen pickle that you can, like, what? <laughs> like rub yourself with <laughs> like what is, what is it it's, it's very odd like i and i'm someone who likes pickles which uh again this might upset our american listeners but over here i mean well for a start we call them gherkins but they're not popular they mm. are not popular at all most people despise them it took me years years to get into them because as a kid you're told these are disgusting <laughs> you don't want these things so now I like them, but even me, I'm not having a cold pickle down at the beach. What's it getting? How? Cause you, I can't imagine it freezes solid, but like if you try to eat a cold pickle, it's going to be like the texture of it's going to be so odd. It'd be like kind of like slushy inside, I guess, maybe? or uh, No, I don't know. It'll have a nice bite, I think. It'll be like a crunch. Like I can understand the appeal of that, mm. but just as a snack at the beach? Yeah. I don't, uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe this guy was leading the way. Like this was supposed to be like I'm yeah. gonna make ice cold. This is pickle Rick of his day. He was uh, like, uh, I'm ice cold pickle Rick. But, we'll, uh, we'll christen him pickle prick. Pickle prick. There you go. That's this guy's van. Pickle prick. I see, now it's, that, that is officially the last ever pickle Rick reference that will be made in any media. <laughs> As we all know, that show is gone. So uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, See, I, mean, I already hated quoting that bit as it was. But oh, no, now, it was awful even at the time. So. Yeah, I felt bad even saying it there now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, but uh, it's, a, it's an odd one. I know in Japan, quite a common thing. They like watermelon, but mm. also in the summer, they'll have like an ice cold cucumber mm. as a snack. Like you just you just munch on the cucumber. So I suppose it's kind of similar. But again, 
it's pickled. Mm. It, it's got that vinegary yeah. quality. Like that's weird. It's it's like it's it's literally called a pickle because it's pickled. It's it's saturated with that sour, horrible <laughs> freaking thing. <laughs> Oh. I don't know. Maybe Americans are into it. I know Russians like it because they, um, they'll they regularly have, like, you know, they'll have a shot of vodka and then you can have a shot of, like, pickle juice. Yeah. Because it, it staves off a hangover, apparently. Oh. Well, maybe that's what they're doing. Everyone's partying. Get your ice cold. <laughs> and like, again, like, imagine Dragons on. They've bought some ice cold. Like, oh, I need you to insert this ice cold pickle. <laughs> oh. Oh, baby, I need you to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I did, I did, because we do, we do have American friends. Uh, I did ask a couple of them, mm. uh, and one in particular told, she told me like, no, I prefer my pickles at room temp. Uh, okay. So I don't, I don't believe the ice cold pickle is a thing that, that, that ever took off. I, I have mine cold. I have them out of the fridge. Uh, uh, I don't really like a lot of room temperature stuff. It's got to be hot or it's got to be cold. Mm, mm. I see. I'm just not a pickle. I love vinegar, weirdly enough, mm. but I'm not a pickle person. But I am like, as soon as I get like chips, I'm just like, oh, fucking slather. Do you want salt and vinegar? He's like, don't care about the salt. They're salty enough. <laughs> but like, slather them in vinegar. Yes, please. Oh, yeah. 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 You got to just drown those things in vinegar. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then to see, when I was trying to make out the back of the van, it's, I couldn't make out what it says. But it seems like it says like, conk is, conk is bass. Yeah, I couldn't figure that out. I'm assuming it may, must be something. Maybe it's just a logo or something. Like it might be like Conic ba- Bass. That's like a brand or something. Maybe, but like. Oh, maybe. See, I, I thought maybe that instead of is it was fifteen, but that doesn't oh. make sense anyway. Like that doesn't mean anything, does it? No, I think I'm actually now you say it, I think it is a fifteen actually. Uh, Conk fifteen bass. Maybe the it? guy caught fifteen bass. Uh, it's was... an award he got. <laughs> <laughs> As he can find out, now it was all fraud. He only caught thirteen. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a big range of drinks, though, considering when you actually look, it's a hot dog van. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not uh, bad, is it? Like, over here, it's like, yeah, you can have a bottle of water or you can have a Coke. Mm. <laughs> so. I think it, was, uh, it has one of these things that, um, I don't I don't think it ever made it over here. The Mr. Pib. Uh, yeah, I know. I don't think it did. So no, now over here, you finally can get Schnapple. It was always a thing I always remember from Seinfeld, the amount of times. like Seinfeld always did very deft product placement. It was still yeah. shameless product placement, <laughs> but it would always felt very natural. So they'd always have Elaine coming in, opening the fridge, going Snapple, and then waving the <laughs> bottle around, putting it back in. Um, oh, but so I, I knew about it. So then I had to import that for my sister because she wanted it. Yeah. Oh, wow. No, finally, finally, in the corner shops, you can get them now. But I remember being like, oh, my God, it's Snapple. <laughs> and then, but yeah, Mr. Pibb still never, I have no idea what it even is, actually. I, I didn't even think to look it up. But No, I don't know. I mean, at first as well, I was confused because the second one says range. But then I was like, oh, wait, is it saying this is the Mr. Pibb range? And oh, I you can choose saying... ginger ale, root beer, iced tea, lemonade. I thought it just said orange. <laughs> oh, it does. It's an O. It's an O, but it's an orange for the O. But you go up to this guy. Could I, could I get a range, please? Uh, like, like a range of what? <laughs> oh, it is. It's orange. So well, I think is that like the, orange soda? I think the, the, the O is like even a little orange slice. I think he's, Yeah, it's he's, an orange. That's why I was confused. Yeah. Ah, uh, that makes more sense. Uh, so okay, so it is Mr. Pibb then. So what is Mr. Pibb? Uh, Mr. Pibb, it's... it's... Let's see. Like, so one of the one of the main questions that comes up is Dr. Pepper and Mr. Pibb the same? Oh. So I guess it must be similar enough to Dr. Pepper. I guess Which maybe is a controversial drink over here as it is. A lot of people don't like Dr. Pepper. For some, they, that was the advertising, if you remember, back in the day. And that was uh, weird because I hated it when I first tried it. And then the other day I purposely bought uh, – and I actually thought of you when I bought it, John. I was like, oh. I must tell John about this. Um, you can get in Home Bargains now vanilla Dr. Pepper. Oh yes, and it was. I gotta tell you, I'm not a fan. I wasn't a fan, Doctor. But I think maybe because I was going in expecting it to be Coke. Yeah, and it's just not. But then having having it more recent times, when you just know what it is, like no, no I'm, I'm 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 cool with it now. And that vanilla was top tier. That's Ooh. absolutely absolutely loved it. So I'm excited for that. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, over here. Uh, I'm addressing our American listeners a lot this episode. Uh, over here, the advertisement was. It was basically like, oh, don't don't rule it out. It's nice, honestly. <laughs> like the slogan was Dr. Pepper, so misunderstood. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I know you think it's disgusting American shit, but it's not. <laughs> the other thing too was always like, what, what's the worst that could happen? Dr. Pepper, what's that the, the worst, worst that could happen? That was the other one, what's the worst that could happen? I forgot about that one as well. Yeah, so two slogans addressing that. Like, yeah, we know you don't, you don't want to like it. But, uh, this is all stuff we should have looked up previously because now I'm like, if, if they're similar enough, 
was it always like is Mr. Pibb a ripoff of Dr. Pepper or was it that they made Mr. Pibb and then the marketing team's like, well, how do we make it better to, to people? Wow. It's like, well, make it a doctor. A doctor's better than just some guy. <laughs> so <laughs> Dr. Pepper. I've looked it up oh. while you were talking. I've looked it up. So Mr. Pibb was a form, was a oh. form of root beer. Oh, so it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah. A dangerous marketing mistake oh. since Coke's goal because it's made by Coke, this one, mm. was to capitalize on Dr. Pepper's taste distinction. So they're ripping off Dr. Pepper. Ah. And it failed because Dr. Pepper already had the whole market. But looking at it, it says was. But there is, there are certain versions of it you can still obtain, like Pib Extra. I think a lot of these things can't, they know, when they're that big, they never really die. There's always some fan campaign to keep them going somehow. Like, yeah. they'll always reappear. Like, that was the thing with, with Twinkies were supposed to die out. And then when they said, like, yeah, was, Twinkies is gone, we're not making them anymore. Which is right, because they're disgusting. I had a, <laughs> had a box one time. Again, because it was like, oh, there's Twinkies over here. You always heard, oh, Ghostbusters, oh, tell them about the Twinkie. I tried yeah. it, and I felt terrible for about a day. <laughs> They're so awful, Twinkies. But then when they announced, like, no, we're getting rid of these, the the, the, the people revolted. They were like, what? They you did. can't get rid of Twinkies? And then they brought them back. I said, you can't get rid of these. It's like, we're getting rid of them because no one's eating them. I was like, well, we'll eat them then. Christ, we didn't realize you are going to take them away. Yeah, fine, fine. You want us to eat them? We'll eat them. Yeah. But then I, yeah, from having one, I was just like, because wasn't that the, that guy who shot Harvey Milk? His defense was like the junk food defense. He's like, yeah, I was living on Twinkies and destroyed my mental health. <laughs> I, I, I can was... see that being true. Yeah, so I, I had like one. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah, I, I can imagine killing somebody. <laughs> <laughs> you only committed uh, assault. You didn't yeah. kill anyone, but you I, almost... I was just, I just drove around uh, Sefton Park going, hey, baby, <laughs> make, make it with a rock star. Shake I'm it, madam. Make it with a podcatcher. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but oh. Uh, anyhow. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, the, we got we got the guy uh, playfully squirting these girls with a water pistol, which I think is also harassment. Mm-hmm. Um, but I die laughing every time I watch this movie because he's doing that playful, sexual, and then it suddenly switches. It cuts to showing us kids showering. Yeah, yeah. In it amongst is, all this sexual banter, kids that showering. Is, there's just a bucket of ice water <laughs> right, <laughs> right on top of you there. Maybe that was why Kim goes, oh, we don't want the people to get too horny. Yeah. <laughs> like, Let's back, bring it down. <laughs> dial it back, way back, 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 back. Oh. It's an odd tonal shift. Uh, the whole thing is, though, like, uh, seeing those showers, in particular, like, those beach showers always reminds me uh, I know you're, John, you're saying you're, you're, you're a fan of the bikini and stuff, but no. I, I at one point went on a three week uh, driving tour. Me and like three of my friends drove mm. around like a lot of Europe. Yeah, just it, just the four of us in this car uh, for three weeks, and we hit uh, we got to Nice. Ooh. And at this point, like you know, we were about like twenty or twenty one at the time, and you know. You had no privacy for three weeks, basically. <laughs> you had no way of, like, you know, relieving yourself of any tension. Yeah. And but uh, like, this all very much reminds me. Like, we're just walking around those 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 beaches in Nice, just seeing the amount of like. I remember women in bikinis in those showers and just being like, "Oh my god, <laughs> this is <laughs> this is killing me." <laughs> like, and then the, the three of us we ended up at um, a beach volleyball tournament, and we were all just sitting, like, no one said anything, but we all knew what we were. We were just all sitting looking, just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really reverted to like base primitive instinct of just like you became monkey man yeah yeah it's just like we just had all you know too much gunk on the brain it was all stored up inside so it was just leaking <laughs> into our brains and we're just like just one more week till we're home guys <laughs> <laughs> just gotta make it one more week <laughs> yeah and then I remember going into uh, one of the camping site showers and the giant spiders nest it had in there <sighs> and just still Still pretty disturbing to think that it was like the fact you could make out the color of it and stuff. It was like a no. weird yellow and purple colored spider that was like the size of a hand. No, was, uh, no, no. Run, run, run. Yeah, that had a giant, like a, a proper sack of eggs underneath Ooh. it. And it was just me showering, looking up and seeing that, and like, oh! <laughs> I was oh, like, God. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm terrified. Oh, yeah. Now you've killed the sexual banter. <laughs> That's why K. Kim just edits in a shot of a spider with the spider with egg. <laughs> it's like, we, we need to bring people down even more. Come on. Come on. Uh, so then it goes, like, well, we'll, we'll bring the horniness back up. What about a three second shot of a big red car? <laughs> That's... Oh, yeah. I looked the car up. 
Oh, as, as did I. As did oh, I. you yeah, go so. ahead then. Oh no, you go. You go. Cause I, I didn't get a lot of. Uh, I just got the the basic make of what it is, uh, and there, there does seem to be like history behind it and stuff. Because it is the Chevrolet sedan delivery. Yeah, that's what I found anyway. At least I don't know. Maybe you're coming. It's like, wait, talk about it's like a Plymouth Skylark or something. No, no, it's Chevrolet sedan delivery, uh, first made in 1946. Yeah, yeah. It seems like this was the basis for like a lot of then, like you know, the the, the it was a two door vehicle that uh, was you know basically custom made to deliver things and to have like a lot of uh, you know a, a firm base. So you could end up, you know, storing a lot of stuff inside and, you know, because I think previously there's just like, oh, cars are all basically the same. So if you want to deliver yeah. stuff, you just shove it in the back seat. And this thing's like, no, it's actually designed as a delivery vehicle. And then it became so popular. That's where, like, police cars started being based on this. Back, like, so old-timey police cars kind of look like this thing. And then ambulances, the same deal. And then it sort of just uh-huh. spawned out. And then, you know, eventually they're like, maybe – we should put two more doors on the back, and that'll make it even handier for people. What? <laughs> uh, and yeah, yeah, but it seems to be very, very celebrated. The, um, the Chevrolet sedan delivery. So um, I could maybe it could be there was like a like a like a gearhead in the car. Like, oh my god, it's a old sedan. Look, it's pristine and stuff. They're like, yeah, I mean, it looks it looks in good shape, doesn't yeah, it? Um, yeah. I don't know if they were maybe still making different versions of it, but the. What I found was it is a 1946 model. So mm. I don't know. I, mm. I found one online actually for three thousand six hundred dollars. So Ooh. if we get enough Patreon money, we'll buy one. That doesn't seem bad at all, too, for like you know no. for a car. Yeah, it's like yeah, three th- three three grand. Yeah, pretty. let's do it. So uh, donate to the Patreon people, and if we get three thousand six hundred dollars, we will buy this car, even though neither of us can drive. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I did note uh, underneath the wheel, uh, there's a random paper cup thrown yep. aside it's like people clean up after yourselves you never know who might be filming and it's gonna ruin the shot then <laughs> <Just>, um, <laughs> some leaves of trash is lying around on the beach that's the reason the movie bombed <laughs> people were disgusted with the littering and they closed down daytona beach after this it's like nobody ever wants to go there again they just think it's like some sort of friggin tip down there <laughs> yeah yeah they didn't close it down when that shark ate that kid but they closed it down for this <laughs> well more people came because they were hoping to see a shark eat another kid so. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, and then we got to a shot of we're back with that kid uh, again on his on his little uh, trike thing mm. with the the grandparents in tow behind. But yeah, this this guy up front now too. So I'm assuming this is like the dad, maybe like of yeah. the family, big daddy. Uh, so this is a this is a family day out, and they're like, oh, we're all gonna drive around. I got the the kid. This. So the kid is having this unfortunate day of like trying to look cool AF. And he's got his sunglasses on. He's got his Hobie from Baywatch haircut. And, you know, he's like oh, hoping that all the girls are going to notice him. And like, hey, baby, make it with a trike rider or whatever. Yeah. But he's in an unfortunate lame sandwich. Because uh. uh, he's got his very, just the most dad looking man in the world. <laughs> in front of him. Yeah, yeah. He looks like my dad or something. Yeah. Oh, he's, you know, that's a guy who like barbecues on a Saturday. Yep. And he goes in and he works in a cubicle every every day of the week and he hates his job and he hates his wife and he hates his kid. Over here, he'd be watching the rugby, but in America, I guess the football. You know. Yeah, yeah. This is the type of man who's waiting for married with children to be born so he can relate <laughs> to Al Bundy. Uh, and then behind him, then even worse, is his, his, his grandparents with their lame bumper <laughs> sticker about how cool it has been a grandparent or whatever. Oh, I feel for this kid. This was me in Thailand trying to be cool, but I was actually with my mum and dad. <laughs> Oh, you do. Like, I do. I do feel for the kids out there. So, yeah, because it's like be your parents. Are they? I think it's now as a per, who's of the age to be a parent. I would purposefully not allow my kid to be cool. I would be like, yeah, I had to suffer through it, so I'm gonna make you. I'm gonna make things awkward for you. Maybe that's what he's doing here. He's like, hey, there's no way you're scoring with any ladies today, kid. <laughs> the kids out there. Oh my god, I'm gonna get so. He's like, yeah, but look, son, I got one too. Uh, uh, you know he's probably there. He's like, you drive behind me because I want you have to keep the same speed, okay? I don't want you speeding around this because so the kid's gonna be like, he's going like four miles per hour or something. Yeah, dad's setting the pace. Yeah, yeah. With him. he's like not allowed to get there, you know, even slightly ahead of him or anything. And then it's like, you can't fall behind too far because the, the grandparents are right behind. It's like, oh my god, clever so, tactic. This, yeah, it's yeah. all to keep the kid's dick in his pants. <laughs> Speaking of someone who's not, who doesn't want to keep their dick in their pants, uh, the following shot is then this. This is one of those things you're like, this. This is what movies by minutes is all about. Yeah, <laughs> you get this guy 
who is just in just the most sus- like the uniform of the suspicious man. <laughs> like, this kind of drab shirt uh, tucked into trousers. He's got a headband for some reason. Yeah, uh, why and not? Then, and then he is carrying a uh, a placard. <laughs> But uh, let's see. Try to get the entire thing in. Let's see what the. You have to get the exact exact second right to see if we get the whole. I've, read I've the got whole. it on second fifty seven, and that seems to have it all. Let's see. Yeah. So it says, "Nudist Christian Church, the humble road to heaven. God is naked, also!" Exclamation point. <laughs> Vote for nude beaches, parks. Repent in the raw. <laughs> Repent in the raw. I love it. That's <laughs> filth. That is. It's just like. Okay, what's this bit weird? Do you want the nude beach? Like, uh, for religious reasons? <laughs> like, this <laughs> oh, seems... yeah, sure, you know, yeah, it's, it's a religious thing, sure. And then, but then just putting in, repent in the raw. <laughs> Underlining raw. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like, then, yeah, you, you tipped your hand, man. <laughs> if people weren't already suspicious of your satchel and shirt, you know he's wearing sandals with socks as well. Oh, 100%. You know he is. And there's nothing more suspicious than sandals and a satchel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, oh, wait, I'm surprised. Maybe he's been warned or something. Because I'm surprised he's he's the most the most clothed man we've seen. So far. oh, I, I think I think it's got to be illegal, and this is him trying to like pass a law kind of thing. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like, because if he could be naked, it sounds like he would. I think he'd be at least down to like maybe wear like flesh colored briefs. Yeah, like little speedos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he seems like he ain't he ain't practicing while he's preaching. He's he's like. Everybody else is is basically naked, and he ain't. He's just not. <laughs> you ask him about. It, he's like, yeah, not for me. I just want to see you naked. Oh, but he's like, yeah, no, no. I'm I'm just gonna sit. I'm just gonna get my binoculars and then, <laughs> basically free porn is what I'm, I'm advocating. I just like so- to watch you guys. <laughs> this is actually yeah. This is Denny's dad. <laughs> Denny from the room. This is where he came from. His dad was, was this guy, and it's then amazing. he got locked up. That's why you never see him in the film. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Oh God! I, I, I tried to uh, research if the nudist Christian church was a thing. <laughs> um, I, I don't I, think so because you see that police car in the background. Well, I'm thinking this nudist Christian church. It's that one man, and this is the end <laughs> of him. <laughs> like the, 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 the cops are going to leap out of that car any second, and then well, they're going to throw that sign in the sea and get him bungled in the back of that car. <laughs> well, I, I didn't find one by that name, but I did locate the Garden of Eden Church. Oh, who have yeah. similar values, and they're in Florida. Mm, mm. And they sound like a regular church when you look at the website, but then they throw the nudism in there. I've got, a, I've got a quote. The sin that Adam and Eve committed was not being naked. The sin they committed was to eat of the tree that God told them not to. By doing this, they gained knowledge, which included shame. Also under the precepts of sin and the divinity of God, who is holy, sin cannot be in the presence of God. So if this is true, then being naked cannot possibly be a sin. For Adam and Eve were both in the presence of God when nude. Mm. It's God's design to be nude. And the sin is to call something good that God did. Oh, sorry. And the sin is to call something that God did not define good, i.e. to call clothing good when God did not make clothing before nudity. Jesus Christ. (laughs) Although wearing clothing is not a sin, and this is because God made a way, grace, for man to cope with his understanding of shame. (laughs) I'm loving all the little side tangents there. Oh, there's a million. It's just a funny It's all God, who was holy. (laughs) (laughs) I know. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's kind of a given. I get it. God's holy. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Move on. You don't need to do that. It's like, oh. But God is a deity that lives uh, up in the sky. <laughs> my my favorite bit here you've got, if you're not a member of Lake Como Resort and would like to attend church only, please email your name by Friday so Pam can put your name on the guest list. <laughs> well, I do know. Uh, I should have gone to her. Ask more. I thought I'd say that would be a weird thing to ask questions about. Although I guess she would be like very open about it. But uh, people who listen to our other show, Bat Minute, one of our recurring guests is, of course, uh, Brittany Simon. Mm. Uh, I believe she was a nudist for a while because Brittany's ah. done everything. She's like very sex positive ad- advocate. And she's been like yeah. constantly talks about her wild 20s of <laughs> living in BDSM dungeons and all the how enthusiastic she is about the BDSM lifestyle. But I believe she was. It's like Brittany's weird. She's like used to be like a crazy, like insane level, level leftist. Yeah. And then she went and she became like a full on conservative at one point to the point where they offered her a radio show. Oh, my God. Like they wanted her to be like the the, les- the lesbian Republic, the Republican, they said. They, they, and then she was like, well, I'm, I'm 
bisexual. It's like you just pretend that you're a lesbian for the purposes. <laughs> of... And then now she's in, but like, Brittany has her own thing going on. She's neither left or right. She's just sort of in her own little in her own little thing. But um, but yeah, I do believe for a while she lived as a nudist as well. So maybe oh. she could tell us about repenting in the raw. And the... Yeah, it's worth asking. I, actually, I, I, I'm friend not good friends, but I'm friends with someone who uh, is a a nudist and a life model and has been on Naked Attraction. I suppose oh. I should have asked her. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, it's always that thing, though, because you see any footage of the nudist speech and it is always very, like... It's always... The guys do always let it down, unfortunately. Because it's, it's never, like, a cool, hunky guy. It's always just, like, you know, <laughs> sort of saggy, middle-aged people. And hey, you just see, like, yeah, everything... Embrace all bodies on the beach. I guess it's, that should be that. Maybe that's half their point. It's like, look, every all bodies are beautiful and stuff. But it really does like it's it's like it's like that episode of Seinfeld where he has the 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 girlfriend who's naked all the time, she just hangs around the apartment naked. And Jerry initially is like, This is great and then after a while he discovers like, No, no, there's bad naked. There's things her doing <laughs> naked aren't it kinda turns you off her and stuff. It's so like <laughs> It's you know seeing her trying to open a, a jar of pickles and all the every muscle flexing as she's trying to do it. It's like oh no, I didn't want to see that and stuff. But, I mean, as someone who's not a nudist, I kind of agree. Like I don't, I don't think naked is necessarily the most sexy. Mm. No, I, no, nudists no. aren't doing it to be sexy, are they? So yeah. no, they have the genuine. Like, this guy, I don't believe, but actual proper <laughs> nudists, I believe they have some sort of like either a spiritual or a sociopolitical uh, you know, yeah, well, regard for what, what they're doing. But Well, this church had a, a quote from the Bible as well, which uh, allegedly, I've, I've not read the Bible. Apparently it says, uh, it's it's Jesus and it's in Matthew, I don't understand how the quotes work, 6, 28 yeah, yeah. Uh, to 29. And he says, So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. That's their big <laughs> quote that they want for you to become a nudist. Mm. <laughs> That's it, it, yeah, it is just all very strange. Like, if, I'm not, I'm not going to poo-poo anyone's you know, beliefs or anything, but it is just really like, so this is what you're getting behind, just not wearing clothes. Like, yeah. who cares? <laughs> like, just, just do what you want. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm weirdly torn on it myself because, yeah, I, I think people should do what they want to do. Absolutely, yeah. mm. but I also have no interest in it. So, but I and I don't want to see it at the beach myself. Yeah, like I understand having a separate nudist beach. Mm. You know, like a separate thing. So you choose to interact with that. <laughs> I guess maybe though, it's like I, I can get behind. That's the thing is because you know, like I think I remember like even like swimming lessons in school I didn't like because they made no. you they made you just wear nothing basically. Yeah, I used to put a t shirt on and get told off, and I'm like, I'm not taking it off. <laughs> yes, yeah. I think now more, I'll be more excited. That's why I'm an agent's new. But now, now I would have the power to go. No, I'm going to go in a t-shirt. There's nothing you can do to stop me. Yeah, is uh, that'd be the way to go nowadays. But like, it. Uh, so I didn't like that back then. But I, I, but but maybe if there was some more, you know, messages about body positivity back then. But then it's going to say body positivity to children. But then that's kind of getting into like, well, that's getting into dodgy territory as well. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah it becomes a bit. Mm. Suspect. Yeah. Yeah. Especially this guy. Look at him. Oh, no, this guy is definitely, he's up to something. <laughs> like, <laughs> that guy don't trust this guy one one second. Dirty hippie. Yeah. This is probably like this, like Miami connection was used in this guy's trial to prove that he was there that day or something. <laughs> this is, this is uh, footage. Yeah, this is why the movie bombed, actually. It's because uh, the nudists boycotted it. Yeah, and... they had to pull the only copy from theatres because yeah, they needed, it was, it was they evidence. Needed... Yeah. Like, you can put it back out, YK. Oh, oh, no, it's gone. <laughs> Sorry. You missed your, your release window. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> well, some, some people up to something else a little bit strange. But, you know, I won't yuck their yum. Um, we see a couple making sandcastles together. Yeah. Which yeah. is usually a kid's activity, you know, but it's fine. Maybe they're partaking in age play. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> getting into other uncomfortable territory again. <laughs> You know, uh, is that inherently wrong? I don't know. I'm not part of that world. I don't well, I know. Think it's like if you're if you're practicing all these things in the safety of your own home, and you're not if it's, if it's actively stopping you from doing anything illegal, like it's sort of then like, well, I guess. But it's you know. worrying that it, you would think of it in that way. Not you. But you yeah, know, yeah. Um, well, I suppose yeah. Even if you're like, if I don't do it in the privacy of my home, I'm, going, I'm liable to go out and do something in real life. That's the, yeah. You need to stop yourself then from. You need to talk to a therapist or something at that at that, that stage. But, yeah. But it's uh. Yeah. <laughs> I like I how much we're dancing around what we don't really want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> well, but um, 
But yeah, I mean, that's like, I know I've got more notes on those guys because they have more of them in the next minute as well. So yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so we'll uh, we'll break the connection once again, and uh, I was going to say head off into the dark, dark night. That's the other show. <laughs> head off to the bright, bright beach. I guess. Yeah, we're going to cruise down that beach, baby. Speak to us as usual on uh, Facebook at Miami Minutes Taekwondo Orphanage, Twitter at Miami Minutes, Instagram Miami Minutes, and why don't you send us an email? Miami Minutes Podcast at gmail.com. Send in your videos of you doing Angelo's dance. I want to see you, Sean German. I want to see you, Dave Palace. Get grooving, baby. Send them in. And uh, let us know if we can share them. If they're just for our personal use to uh, beat off to while on holiday, that's fine. See, they're not posted on anything. And then they're like, did you get those videos? Oh, we got them. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we made good use of those. Uh, join us again in one week for more Miami Minutes. Hiya! Listen to me. Listen to me.